Hi everyone and welcome back. In this episode, I'm going to take you around the user interface to help get you up to speed on where everything is located. So let's jump right in. From the very beginning, we wanted to make the content you design the center of attention. That's why the majority of the window is our viewport to where all the magic happens. It is backed up with a brand new homebrewed rendering engine to give you greater immersion in your project to improve fidelity and the real time workflow. Moving around the terrain is similar to other 3D applications. Use the mouse to pan or rotate around the content, plus some other key bindings to navigate as well, such as WASD. I'll be sure to point out any other key bindings, but you can download my PDF handout of these by clicking the link in the description below. Flanking center stage, we have the file menu and the view menu. The file menu is where we can see some typical options such as start a new project, open a previous one, or even save the current project. The view menu, on the other hand, allows us to hide or unhide the various types of visual effects displayed on the terrain or on screen. For example, we can show clouds to test out various volumetric conditions, or show the water lines so that we can design some beaches. We can even hide the texturing of the terrain so we can just see what the design of our terrain looks like at its base form. Being able to see or unsee different elements of the terrain will aid us in the design process as we move forward. The main panel to the right is our design panel where we will spend most of our time adding features, adjusting settings, and getting things just right. This panel is broken down to a few sections, the terrain section, the environment section, the export section, and the settings menu. The terrain section is where we will be going through further in the next episodes, breaking down each area. But in summary, this section allows us to establish the size of the terrain, precision or resolution density of the terrain, setting up biome structures, and adjusting the various settings for guiding the global settings for the terrain's detail. This area is also where we will be setting up any biome systems, using map tiler, custom terrain shaping, applying filters or terrain effects, texturing, adding in objects, and establishing roles. The majority of this series, we will dive into each of these areas much more in depth to begin creating a terrain. The environment section is where we can adjust all the additional processing effects that you see on screen, such as lighting, camera, cloud effects, adding fog, adjusting the water, and more. The export section is where we can run through the various ways to export different content from World Creator to be used in other applications. You can set up custom export presets or make your own export types and more to get the content that you need. This is an exciting section to be able to open the possibilities in other DCC applications. Last but not least is the settings menu. Here, we can change some texture identifiers based on your usual nomenclature, but we'll cover this whenever we go over the textures later on in the series. We also have the ability to edit the UI's color interface or decide if the menu is transparent, solid, or blurred. We will go over these in the next two sections in future videos, but the generate section essentially allows you to turn on or off real-time generation, and the map section lets you use map tiler's real world data to design with. The goal of the user interface for World Creator is to not only be sleek, but easily understood. Throughout time, there will be more adjustability for the interface to fit your personal needs, along with the possible addition to new sections, new windows, and new variations to meet the right layout for your workflow. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.